See, this is why I make videos so you don't end up with stuff like this. Let's get into it. I thought we would start with some skincare today. First, I want to talk about this moisturizer from Rose Ink, which is one of the weirdest but also coolest moisturizers I've ever tried. So this is called their Hydration Replenish Micro Encapsulated Moisturizer. If you did not see my short on this, it kind of looks like little tiny like caviar it's so weird and i was like i'm either gonna really hate this texture or really like it so you can sort of feel like the little capsules when you have it on your skin and then when you start to rub it in they burst and like smooth onto your skin skin's a little bit irritated today and because just looking at this it looks like more of a gel moisturizer i thought it wouldn't be like as hydrating and moisturizing as it is but it's like a very oh, it's such a like interesting texture to describe it's a very thick gel that was not a great explanation so it's a gel feeling so it's light and refreshing if you have oily skin you're probably gonna like the more gel consistency but i still feel like it's moisturizing and sort of thick enough that if you do have like normal to dry your skin you will really like this as well i feel like it's a great all-around moisturizer for any skin type and it's beautiful under makeup so i wanted to use it today you can sort of see like compared to the peach and lily like gel moisturizer that i really like that one sort of sinks in and gives you like a really skin like it kind of just looks like your skin without moisturizer but this one you can visibly see that it does add a little bit of that moisture layer onto the skin i also don't really notice much fragrance i don't think they have added fragrance in here but it's just so fun like it's been a joy to use. Next I have this eye cream from In Beauty Project. This is my first product I've tried from them. I know they have that like glowy base product at Sephora that I've always been intrigued in trying but this is the bright and tight eye cream. It says it visibly improves dark circles and wrinkles and instantly brightens. It has vitamin C and peptides. I love the packaging. I like that it comes in a pump. Something about like eye cream in a jar I don't like. The application as much so you might be able to see this has a slight like orangey yellow peachy tint which is why it says it's instantly brightening and it does also have a little bit of a pearlescence through it very subtle though you can't notice on the skin so i just really like that it has that slight tint and slight glow especially if you just want to wear this like without makeup or under makeup. It's a really great base for concealer. It doesn't interfere with the formula of concealer, which has been really hard to find in an eye cream. Also, don't notice any scent, really gentle. And I've just been loving the brightening aspect of this, especially if you have dark circles like me. I tried one from Honest Beauty that has a tint as well, but I like how this one's a little bit pearly, so it just gives you a little glow, glowy glow under the eyes. If you've never tried these, they're so good if you like Pops flavor. I don't drink beer, but I really like these. Chamomile one though is my favorite. No caffeine and you just like herbal tea tastes. I've also been really liking this eye cream in combination with this little, this is the Solo Wave wand, which has like red light and it also does a little bit of vibrating. You just turn it on. I like to angle it and then usually just right after I put the eye cream on so it has a really nice glide. Just do this a little bit and it, I feel like it just de-puffs and smooth. I feel like it's a really nice prep thing to do before makeup and i like how you can rotate this so it's like really easy to use whatever you know side of your face you want to use it on i'm not totally sure on like all the specs of this i will have it linked below i am familiar with red light though because i have the therapies that i use at night which i really like this is a great like smaller more portable option if you wanted to do like some more targeted areas i also feel like the charge on this lasts a long time which i like now that my skin is prepped i feel like it's a little bit calming down a little bit i've never been to a dermatologist so like i've never been diagnosed with rosacea but i'm pretty sure i do have it just like sometimes these parts of my cheeks get really red like the rest of my cheeks have redness but like these specifically get extra red so for foundation i do have a new one here it's a new formulation of sort of an original foundation it's the bare minerals bare pro skin perfecting matte liquid foundation i love this before so i'm really curious to see if this new formula is good Hopefully they didn't ruin it. I think they might have added some new shades. This is the Fair 10 Neutral, which I think is actually going to be a good match. Usually with Bare Minerals, they run really peachy or really yellow, but this one looks like it's going to be a good one. This also has zinc oxide in it. Don't know if it has enough to be considered sunscreen. Oh yeah, it does. SPF 20. That's cool. So I'm just going to start with... That was sort of like two pumps. They seem to be small pumps though. Do have some new blushes to try out, new concealer. Ooh yeah, this has such a nice coverage to it. This is also a really good one for sensitive skin because it doesn't 
have fragrance or a chemical SPF in it. Ooh, that's really good coverage. This is what I was needing today. And look at that match. I feel like this is such a surprisingly good match for me. Fair Cool Olives, you might wanna try this one out. This looks beautiful on the skin, by the way. It gave me so much coverage, like look at the difference. But it still feels really lightweight, which is what I remember loving about it, and it wears really well. But we'll see if this new formula wears well. Hopefully it does, because if they changed it and made it worse, I hate when like companies do that. I'm gonna take another pump for this other side of my face. I'm also using this with a sponge, by the way, which usually shears things out a bit, but it's just blending so nicely. This is looking so pretty and healthy. I'm really excited. Also keep an eye on oxidization anything like that. Also, these two under this foundation worked so well. I feel like just every foundation I've tried these with have been such a good combination. Oh, I also think Bare Minerals gave me an exclusive like discount code. I believe it's for this foundation. I'll have to check and put it in the description if you wanted to try it out if it ends up being good. Let's move on to some concealers. So these are new from Smashbox. These are their Halo Healthy Glow 4-in-1 Perfecting Pens. So they're like little pen concealers. I have one I might use as a bronzer and then this lighter one. This looks like a good shade. It's called F10N. found a really good shade in Smashbox with their foundation, so I think this one will work. So this has that like, I remember I used to really like the YSL like pen concealer that had the brush tip like this. And then you just oop, twist it up. I don't, I feel like it's so, you get such an uncontrollable amount of product with these. It's definitely not my favorite way to apply concealer. Like, I think I just did it a little bit too much, but it is fun to like paint on concealer like this. Let's start this under the eyes. It looks like it's gonna be nice and light and brightening. Sorry if you can hear the rain, but also maybe that sounds nice in the background. I definitely like the sound of it. Ooh, I really like this for like highlighting areas. Although, did have quite a lot of coverage from that foundation, so I don't feel like I need a ton. Let's blend this out. I do have my brows done as well, obviously. <laughs> I'm gonna take just whatever's left over, do a little bit under my cheekbones. This is looking really good as well. I love the shade. It is really nice and bright. You know sometimes with concealers you just can't find something that's even bright enough for fair skin. I would say this for sure has more of a like satin dewy finish to it. I feel like the skin overall is looking nice and dewy. I wanted to do a dewy look today, so I'm happy about that. I might try this shade. This is the shade M10N as like a bronzer. Might be a little bit too pigmented. Looks like it might be a little bit yellow. Let's do just a little bit of this. And then I'm gonna use this rose ink brush to blend it out. Yeah, definitely a little bit too yellow for my taste. I like that. Mm, yeah, that's that's a lot of bronzer. I'm gonna go back in with my sponge. That looks a little bit better. I think I just need to use a little bit less. I love this brush by Rose Ink, by the way. So it's their like slanted foundation brush. It is so soft. And I usually don't like foundations with brushes, but this is like the exception. It's Something about the fact that it's slanted, I feel like sort of like old YouTube makeup advice would be like always like tap your foundation in and never like swipe it or buff it. But I think with a lot of these more like modern formulas that are more dewy, you can actually get away with like swiping on product and have it look good. And I feel like this is like one that's made for swiping and blending and sort of a more fluid motion versus like just doing this. Like I still do this for bronzer and stuff, but yeah, I just think such a good brush. I'm gonna take whatever's left on my hand for the forehead. If you have pale skin like me, I wouldn't generally advise using like concealers or really high pigmented products as a bronzer. But in this case, I'm using a very small amount and it seems to work. Just because when you are super fair, like you don't have a lot of pigment to your skin. So when you use something really pigmented, it's like putting a marker on paper, right? <laughs> it's like, you don't have a lot to work with so it can just look like a lot of pigment right off the bat doing this using a sponge i feel like you could get away with it that's why like all my bronzer favorites are actually bronzers that aren't very pigmented a lot of makeup nowadays it's like they're always trying to make it super pigmented but a nice sheer product for fair skin is gonna just be so much more wearable the skin is looking so pretty i'm just really liking this foundation concealer combo so these applied really nicely we'll see how they set down and how if they crease or anything like that so we'll set a little bit later on but i do have some new cream blushes i really want to try so i actually have two new sets of cream blushes first let's talk about the 
Bodyography. These are their color cassettes, liquid blush and lip. They are really cutely packaged. I have one open here. This is the shade Soul, which is a nice cool bright pink. This one is Amplify, which is definitely a darker pink. And then we have these warm tones, which I probably, actually this one's more of a red, looks like it could be pretty. And then this orange tone, which is Tempo. Let me open these three cooler tones and give you some swatches. Yeah, this one looks super interesting. So these are exciting because they seem to be a little bit more sheer, like I was just talking about. They're not extremely pigmented like a ton of cream blushes are nowadays. Like I usually don't, they're not my favorite, a super pigmented blush. I like more of that like gel type of sheerness. Bodyography makes such great eyeshadows that I'm really excited they're expanding into more makeup. Ooh, look at this. A lot of nice cool tones in this collection. Oh my god, that one's so pretty. I know I'm teasing you, wait for the swatches. <laughs> okay, so over here is the one that I already had open, which is Soul. Very cool tone, like Barbie pink. And then in the middle, we have Amplify. I feel like that's a really gorgeous, very true cool tone, purpley pink. You could see the sort of like gel sheerness that we have going on. And then this one over here I thought might be a little bit warm, but it's really not. And this one is called Melody. It definitely has more of like a reddish hue to it. They're so pretty. I really like the consistency. And then we have some of these new blushes from Bloom Effects. I don't know if this is this brand's first makeup launch. They have sunscreen and skincare. Really nice stuff, actually. I think they're available on Credo Beauty. So these are their lip and cheek balms and they come in these little tubes these feel like they're sort of like plant plastic or like definitely something oh okay they're fico wood i don't know what that means but it says 95 percent renewable resources and this says it's recyclable as well yeah they have like a really interesting like matte texture to them so i really like that they're doing sustainable packaging and these sound really nice i have two shades here isn't this packaging beautiful with the little tulip and this one is called the stroop waffle i love the name of that i've never had a stroop waffle but i don't know why just like it's so cute to me and they just have a little twist off packaging so both of these the bodyography and these ones claim to be lip and cheek products okay these are nice and creamy also have a nice sheerness to them not as gel feeling as the bodyography ones actually these are really i wouldn't say they're gel they have a sheerness of a gel but the feel like a really smooth hmm, like sort of dry oil feel and these feel a little bit more like dewy moisturizer type. So that's Troop Waffle. That one looks really pretty. And then this one is called Crispa Coral. Guessing this one's gonna be a warm, warm shade, but we'll give her a chance. Yeah, these are definitely more emollient than the bodyography ones. It still looks really pretty if you like warm tones. Now I'm like, which ones do I use? I feel like I really wanna put the bodyography one on. Maybe we'll do both go a little crazy let's start with the bodyography soul shade so they come with a little doe foot i think i'm gonna do one cheek at a time just in case i'm not sure if they dry very quickly and we'll see how pigmented they are Ooh, automatically love love a cool tone that's gorgeous really pretty and dewy i'm loving that shade a little bit did go a long way but it's not overly pigmented which I also like. Do a little bit here. This one I used a little bit more. This was really gorgeous and honestly a joy to apply. It's kind of reminding me of the Chantecaille cheek jellies, like just in terms of the sheerness and sort of the wash of color that they give you. But now let's try a little bit of the Stroop Waffle shade. I think I'm just gonna grab it off the back of my hand. This one looks really pretty and dewy. I'll just layer a little bit of blush. Ooh, both of these, so pretty. How do you feel about blush on the tip of your nose? I don't love it. I like doing maybe a little bit like I am doing now. Definitely not more than that. It's kind of cute. So I just wiped them off just with a towel. It looks like these almost have like a stain to them. So I'm still gonna wait a little bit for those to settle, I guess, before I set. But let's move on to eyeshadow. I have this palette from Florisys. Oh, hold on, one more cheek product. I have these new Smashbox palette so change your plans i will set my under eyes so we can use these i'm gonna make sure that everything is smoothed out under my eyes before i set and i'm gonna use the jones road powder i broke these back out and i've been really liking them they're definitely quite mattifying this is just the translucent version i'm just gonna go right on the under eye sides of the nose into the smile line i think i'm gonna leave the majority of the cheek unset 
but it will set that bronzer and chin powder just gives you like a really pretty like filtered blurring effect to the skin definitely doesn't add any texture it's so nice just already having my eyebrows done i feel like i would love having my eyebrows microbladed but i'm also like terrified that they wouldn't turn out well or like have the right shade like more specifically like the shade like i feel like i'd trust someone with the shape sort of but if they turned out like orange i'd be like oh my god anyway let's move on to these smashbox palettes so these are also new from the halo collection the sculpt and glow face palettes they're kind of giving me like 2014 makeup vibes let's start with this one which is the shade back to cali they're a little bit hard to open but you open them up and you get a nice mirror and then you have four shades you have a bronzer, two blushes, and then a highlight. Face palettes can be good, could be bad. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> then we have pink saturation, which is probably the one I would gravitate more towards. I'll do a little swatches of these shades. That highlight looks really pretty. I did just see that Natasha Denona has a new palette that has eyeshadows and cheek products in it. What do you think of like palettes having both? I don't know if I would really like having those being next to each other. I don't know. Okay, so here are the swatches. This is the bronzer, and then we have this nice cool tone blush, and then we have like a warm tone blush. And then on the bottom here, this like dark stripe right there is the highlight. Based off those swatches, uh, my pet peeve with like cheek palettes, it's like if you're gonna make like two different shades, like this one is clearly warm, why do you need a warm shade in like the more pink cool tone palette? Like, cause if someone likes warm tones, like you could just get this one. Bronzer looks a little bit warm and the highlight looks a little bit dark. So maybe we'll try it out. Since we already have blush and everything on, I guess let's try. Maybe applied, surely this highlight won't be too dark. I'm gonna take it on a little fan brush. Definitely more of a thicker shimmer highlight. Oh no. Oh yeah, you could totally see that's too dark on my skin. Not a vibe. See, this is why I make videos so you don't end up with stuff like this. They're not bad. Like formula wise, it looks like a really nice formula. I'm just saying for like pale fair skin, maybe they have more shades that are lighter, but if you're looking for something that you're gonna get use out of every single one, it's gonna be really flattering. Maybe not the best for pale skin. Anyway, onto eyeshadow. This is from Florisys, a sea beauty company. This is the Into the Wild palette. It's from their new Nomadic collection, I believe it's called. It has this like really interesting faux leather. And I have tried one of their palettes before. This one is really pretty. It definitely has some warm tones in it, but I think we're gonna try to make it work. I don't love super warm tone, heavy eye, but I think there is some shades in here that we can work with. Just starting with a fluffy brush, I actually really love these like mustardy type of transition shades in terms of warm tones i think mustards are some of my favorite just because they have that more muted quality to them yeah that actually looks really pretty these are a nice smooth like they're not completely matte nice and blendable not extremely pigmented so they're quite easy to work with coming in with a bit of a smaller brush i'm gonna take this yellow I'm really interested how this pulls on the eyes and i'm just going to layer that in my crease. It actually looks pretty fun. I think if I'm doing warm tones, I like going more yellow versus orange. And we also have this nice deep brown that doesn't seem too warm. I'm gonna take that same brush to start to deepen up the outer V. I really do like how these shadows aren't very pigmented. Like here's a swatch of the brown one. You can see that it has a sheerness to it, similar to like Chantecaille eyeshadows, which if you are pale like me just makes them sort of easier to work with and you're not going to end up with like big splotches of color that you need to blend out that just added like a little bit of definition next i think we have to use this green shade in the palette whoa this is like a glitter shade when i touch that it like brought out all of the glitter how pretty is that i'm gonna put an eye base down in case we get a lot of fallout. I wouldn't usually do this on top of eyeshadow, but gotta do what you gotta do. Now let's go in with that green shade. Okay, this is so pretty. It has like a sheer base to it, but it has like, hold on, let me apply it first. So it's really interesting. It's definitely like a thicker glitter shade, but it does still have smooth pigment in it. So it looks like it has purple and like various shades of green. I really like the addition of purple in it because it's complementary to green. You can also build it up. This is really unique. Still getting a little bit of fallout, which is, you know, it's a glitter shade, it'll happen. 
That is really, really pretty though. I'm just gonna repeat over here with the eye base. I'm using the Ulta Matte Eye Primer, by the way. I was just not expecting a glitter shade in this palette because it didn't, it looked a lot smoother and then I put my finger in it and it sort of broke through. I think the purpley like glitter in here is really unique. I haven't really seen a green eyeshadow that has those various shades of green and purple. It has this really gorgeous like Reminds me of like the ocean. I don't know, I'm just really liking that. And then I'm gonna take this big, just like neutral champagne shade for the inner corners. I'll do a little bit on the brow bone too. This was a really fun palette to try out. That green shade surprised me. I've not experienced one of those shades in their palettes before. So this is super fun. I think I might tie in the green with a little bit of the NYX Epic Wear Liner. This is the sort of lime green shade they have called Chartreuse Flash. It's just on the waterline. More of a gold green as well, so I think it should tie in those crease shades a little bit. I feel like I do need some eyeliner for this look though, so let me try. I have this Pixie Lash Line Ink, which has this really interesting like long felt tip, which I'm guessing will be really nice for just like the lash line as it suggests. Okay, that was quite interesting to use. It's not as liquidy as I'm used to because I'm used to brush tips and this one's a felt tip. So it's a little thicker than I wanted it to, but nice and pigmented and black. Yeah, this definitely wasn't the easiest to work with for making a wing, but it's called lash line ink. So I think it's more for like getting in the lashes. I feel like this would be really good for like, if you put lashes on, you need to like fill in the gap. It's kind of specific, but I hope you can see how pretty this eyeshadow is. I feel like it just has so much like micro glitter in it. I've never really tried something like this. I think I am gonna go back into that palette and take the deep brown just to smoke out the liner. I'm so not used to just like straight up black liner. My brain's like, make it brown. I always do like, you know, gray, blue, brown, never straight up black. Now for mascara, I do have two ones from Bare Minerals. Don't think I've tried, I think I may have tried the Maximus mascara. So let me try this other one. This is the Strength and Length Serum Infused Mascara. I'm putting serum in everything nowadays. This is like a plasticky, more pointy brush, which I usually like. Okay, I actually love this brush. It sort of has these two points on either side for applying. And then the other sides are actually, well, one of them is smooth. With with just tiny little bristles right in the center. And then the other side is also more flat, but it has more bristles on it, which is so good for like pushing up the lashes, which I always do with a mascara wand anyway. So yeah, that's really interesting. For lips, I'm gonna use the ColourPop Cool BFF. I know, basic, but I just love it. And then I wanna use the new Lawless Cherry Vanilla. So they have the lip balm and the forget the filler they also have like an overnight mask so this is the tinted lip balm let's do a little bit of this the really perfect cherry red so it's not too warm which i really like also i usually don't like cherry scents but i feel like this one is quite nice like isn't that just so pretty with like the nude lip liner it's the perfect amount of color and it feels super smooth really nice balm feeling let's go ahead and top it with the gloss this is the queen size which is like their big version but it looks like they have a lot of really pretty cool tones in this collection this is my first time trying them but i really like this so i might end up trying some of those and this has like a little see it has an indent for your lips these are so pretty it's like a very very melty like not sticky very glossy type of i don't know what to call it i guess it's like a tinted lip gloss what do they call it lip plumping line smoothing gloss but has quite a nice amount of pigment to it it is a little goopy i think i just used too much yeah that's better it does have a little bit of like a pepperminty tingle to it doesn't hurt though and i feel like these shades are just a really nice soft way to wear a slightly more red shade Alrighty, that is our finished full face of new makeup a lot of interesting stuff that i tried foundation and concealer look good but we'll see if they wear well it was also really fun trying those new blushes i honestly like both of those formulas the bodyography one's really nice the bloom effects one was definitely more dewy and just gave us like that glow i was going for smashbox palettes just didn't love the shade then the eyeshadow, I think the mascara is really nice, but we'll see how everything wears. I'll do a little update in the description below. Skincare, loved. Lip products, love. Everything else, we'll see. But thank you for tuning in. There will be another video here if you want to keep hanging out. I will see you over there. Bye.